I was born in 1953. And, and I've seen things happen. It was the, the Korean War was just over. Uh, I grew up seeing the Vietnam War develop and uh, become this incredible thing in our country. Then there was Watergate. Uh, there, and, and other things have happened along these years. The, the, I remember the gas lines when, during the Carter administration. I'm sure a lot of you remember some of these things. Um, but I'm not sure anything has impacted me the way this pandemic has. And it's interesting in that we have not watched people dying in, in, in our presence. Um, obviously, a lot, you know, a lot of people have, have uh, succumbed to this thing in the United States and around the world. Millions of people. But it's not like all of us were in that, that, that close proximity to a lot of those deaths. We hear about them. We, we see the statistics. We know that it's going on. I'm thinking that the, the remedy for this thing has actually been more traumatic than, than even the, the virus itself in many ways. Uh, so I, I, thinking about that this week, I, I did a little research. It's been 472 days since the World Health Organization called it a, a global pandemic. 472 days. And in that time, in the United States, we've had uh, a number of businesses close or file bankruptcy. And, uh, and that seems to be a major impact, which means that millions of people have lost their jobs. And that, that taking care of oneself and one's family uh, has become a real challenge for a lot of people. And even people that didn't lose their jobs uh, in businesses, ha, you know, have struggled through this thing because people weren't able to come and, and take, have their, their services and their products, including this place. And it's had an impact on all of our lives, an incredible impact. I made a list of some companies that have gone through this closure and, and uh, bankruptcy situation. I'm not sure you've heard all of this. Listen to the names of these companies. J. Crew, Gold's Gym, Neiman Marcus, J.C. Penney, Sizzler, No More Buffets, <laughs> Pier One, Hertz, GNC, Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> Ruby Tuesday, Cirque du Soleil is out of business, Brooks Brothers, I don't need any suits, thank God, Lord and Taylor, Steinmart and Belk. I know. And that's just the ones that you would recognize. In the United States, over two, you no, know, something around 200,000 businesses have closed since March 11th last year. 200,000. And 60% of those will not reopen ever. This has been really tough. This has been a, a, a challenge on an economic level, on a personal level, on a community level, so many things. So why am I telling you this? Because this is not the kind of news that you want to hear if you came here to be inspired. <laughs> it is, however, the reality of the day. And what I am calling us to do with that is to rise above it. Because we're, we're, we're seeing the elements of the end of this thing. Here we are, all in the room. I see, I see one mask. There's nothing wrong with masks, and I make no one wrong about that. We all wore them for a long time. But that seems to have taken its course to a great degree. Although some experts say that, that we will have people in our communities wearing masks forever. That will just become part of the culture. It certainly is if you ever go to a doctor's office. I have no idea what my doctors look like. Uh, so the helpful part of this is you've got to know what, what the condition is if you're going to rise above it. You don't have to engage it. You don't have to uh, suffer from it. But you do have to be aware of what's going on, especially if the plan is to rise above it and to call others to rise above it if we are going to do it. And, and when I look at all the things that have happened in my life, in fact, all of the things in history, 
lives. We sort of have found a way beyond them. It's not like it lasts forever. It comes and it goes. Thank God. It comes and it goes. So with this one going, I invite you to join me in knowing that we have a role. We have, we have uh, work to do for ourselves and for humanity. It's to understand this role that we have to not continue to be anchored to this idea that something's wrong. I heard a story this week uh, of uh, um, someone on, on the street in Los Angeles. I heard this uh, from Michael Beckwith, that uh, there was a, a man years ago standing on the street, and he goes, hey, Reverend Michael. And Michael waved at him. And he said, no, 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 I don't talk to you. Come over here, come over here. You know, like, that what doesn't, isn't what Michael does on the street, but he did. He came over and he engaged with this man who apparently had had a, a bit to drink. And uh, uh, he said, you know what the problem is? And he said, tell me. The man said, there is no problem. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you always hear truth from people who are inebriated, but in this particular case, that's profound. Now, that's not the way our minds work. Our minds are constantly looking for the problem. And, I, and I, we think our task is to fix the problem. But what if there's no problem? What if this was something that we were just to go through and experience? Maybe there are gems of wisdom. Maybe there are, are truths buried in this whole pandemic thing that are our job to, to reveal and share with the world. And one way we can obviously do that is by being who we've come to be. Because we've all come here with a purpose. And there have been times in all of our lives where we were filled with this idea that, that we had a powerful calling, that we were here for a reason, and that it's our sacred duty to live that out. And then what happens? Life in this case, a pandemic, and we get distracted. And we end up not really as focused on that opulent idea of who we had come to be as we thought we were or would be. One of my favorite uh, writers, someone who inspires me greatly from everything I've ever heard about him, is Howard Thurman. You all know who that is? There he is. He wrote a book called The Inner Journey. Powerful book. Important book. He was one, in his lifetime, was one of the great leaders of the, the African-American uh, community of, of the United States. But I would suggest more than that, he was a great thinker, a great philosopher, and, and someone who has inspired people of all races. And I want to share my absolute favorite, Howard Thurman writing. It goes like this. Keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. Despite the dullness and barrenness of the days that pass, if I search with due diligence, I can always find a deposit left from some former radiance. But I had forgotten. At the time, it was full-orbed, glorious, resplendent. I was sure that I would never forget. In the moment of its fullness, I was sure that I would illuminate my path. It would illuminate my path for the rest of my journey. I'd forgotten how easy it is to forget. There was no intent to betray what seemed so sure at the time. My response was whole, clean, authentic. But little by little, there crept into my life the dust and grit of the journey. Details, lower level demands, all kinds of cross currents. Nothing monumentous, nothing overwhelming, nothing flagrant, just wear and tear. If there had been some direct challenge, a clear-cut issue, I would have fought it to the end and beyond. In the quietness of this place, surrounded by all the prevailing presence of God, 
my heart whispers, keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. That in fair weather or in foul, in good times or in tempests, in the days when the darkness and the foe are nameless or familiar, I may not forget that which was my, to which my life was committed. Keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. Isn't that powerful? Whew. So how do we do that? How do we keep our resolve clear in front of us? How do we be the ones we've come to be and rise above everything else? How do we do that? Well, I believe we do it by being committed to our path. Now, I'm not suggesting that we're, we're committed in a way that is a struggle. I'm not suggesting that we have to see that path as a burden. In fact, that path is always a blessing. But we have to find our way to it and we have to be uh, in alignment with it to accomplish it. It won't accomplish itself. We did not come to just hang on to the reins and see life happen. We're in charge. It's ours to do. So in the blessings of this, this that is our life, it's our job to keep it going and keep it alive. Whatever it is you believe your reason for being here is, that's your task. Not as a burden, as a blessing. So how do we do that? How do we create that for ourselves along this path? How do we make our lives filled with blessings, no matter what's going on? How is that true for us? So what we do is we, at this moment, what I'm suggesting is that we create a personal recovery plan, a PRP, <laughs> so that we can engage at the point we are at now and say, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm here to accomplish. This is what I'm doing to contribute to the betterment of life on planet Earth. It's my job to do that. But again, not as a burden. Never as a burden, always as a blessing. And what I've discovered is that there are actually things in our lives that are naturally supporting us if we'll take the initiative. If we'll step forward, life will support us. And there's many writers and teachers that have taught that in the past. But we cannot sit back and expect it to come to us. We have to generate the activity that makes it happen. And when we do, it happens. So what I want to share with you is a natural way that life supports us so that we can do what I'm suggesting, so that we can be who we've come here to be, so that we can, can do the good work and live the good life that we've come to live. For ourselves, yes, but for all those around us, because none of us are on our own. None of us. We are in this together. We are here to do this together. So the thing that I want to share with you that I am so delighted to have discovered this week is... Everybody know what that is? Oxytocin. Oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone that is naturally created in the body and it's, uh, what's the other word for it? That thing you talk about, Barbara. Um, hold on, I've got it. Let me find it. It's a, uh, it's a neurotransmitter. It's a neurotransmitter and a hormone. And it comes from the hypothalamus right there, right in the center of your head. But it happens in a lot of interesting ways. It happens naturally. And it's most commonly known for its effectiveness in childbirth and in, it actually creates contractions. It's that natural hormone that creates contractions during childbirth. But it's also released during breastfeeding. Now, trust me, I'm not asking any of you to get pregnant and go through childbirth and breastfeeding. Maybe you will, but I'm not asking that. But there are many other ways that oxytocin shows up in your, in your body to support you. 
And they're all glorious ways. So what I want to do is I want to go through and show you some of the ways that you can generate this hormone in your body. And if you haven't heard of it before, you probably don't know that it's also called the love hormone. That it gives you feelings of connectedness and creativity and confidence and clarity. It's, it's just like the best drug ever. And you make it. Isn't that incredible? So let me show you some of these things. I think I've got nine of them. Things that you can do that will elevate your oxytocin level. These, this is the first one. Yoga. Go figure. By stretching the, the body and by learning to better balance the body, you're actually generating through your hypothalamus this hormone so that when you finish doing your yoga exercises, you feel incredible. And I did yoga for, for a couple of years and it was amazing. I stopped because there was this thing called a pandemic and it just wasn't something that we could do together at the time. So, uh, I, but I, I realized during the time I was very involved in it, how good it was for me, how good it felt, and how wonderful it was to actually improve my balance. I, I remember when I, when I started, I couldn't do tree. Everybody know what tree is? Yeah, I, 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 I just fall over. So, it, but by, by the time I had been at it for a year or more, that all changed. And, and if you're sitting there going, I'm too old to do yoga. That is not true. I know of a woman who was in her 80s when she started. And by the time she was 92, she had the best tree of anybody. <laughs> so think about it. Maybe there's some yoga in your future. Now, Dad, Dad, this doesn't say listen to any music. It says listen to music that you really like. When you listen to music that you really like, it increases your oxytocin levels in a very powerful and meaningful way so that it gives you that extra energy, that extra uh, sense of confidence and clarity to do in your day what you want to do. So listen to some good music. This is a nice place to listen to good music. And there's other places in your life where you can listen to music in a way that supports you having the, all, of this, all of this hormonal support to live the life that you've come to live. Uh, anyone going to complain about this? They say that this tactile connection through massage has a direct effect on your oxytocin levels. So that when, when you're, uh, and you know what, what it feels like after a massage, the, you may have had pain, it goes away, uh, you feel stronger, you feel uh, clearer, uh, you feel relaxed. Oh, do you feel relaxed? That's a wonderful way to accomplish that, is by actually, and I, I think per capita we probably have more uh, massage therapists in the city of Asheville than anywhere in the world. <laughs> so, something to take advantage of. Tell someone you love them. One of my favorite things to do. I love you. Yeah. That there's something that happens when you just say those words, when you look into someone's eyes and you say, I love you. I've made that a part of my life. And I, the thing that I love about it is that it transcends gender or uh, sexual orientation or anything else. It's just love. It's love. And if you can feel it and say it out loud to someone, even though I don't actually think that there's an action of giving someone love. Love is omnipresent like God. So we're not, it's not saying I love you in that I'm giving you something. I'm saying I love you, meaning that when I look at you, when I think of you, when I'm in your presence, my life is better. My life is fuller. And one thing that makes it fuller is your oxytocin levels. <laughs> that you're feeling good about it. So say that as often to someone as you can. Spending quality time with friends is a major way that we accomplish generating oxytocin in our lives. That's what we do here. We come together with friends. 
I love, you know, it, it, sometimes it's, uh, it seems a little annoying when we're trying to get ready for the celebration and people are talking and we're doing the bowls or we're practicing music and it seems kind of chaotic. But really, those are wonderful times because people are so engaged in a connection that they're raising their oxytocin level and they're connecting with someone and feeling that connection. Connections are incredibly critical to our well-being, to our good health on, on levels of, uh, of psychologically, uh, mentally, physically, uh, in every way. It's important for us to be around people that we care about, people that, that we feel connected to, and to continue to increase those connections with everything that we do. Ah, yes, meditation. And... Uh, even though you've probably noticed that the guided meditation that we were doing uh, is, has not happened the last few weeks, uh, the reason is that it made the celebration uh, unmanageably long with all the music that we've added. Uh, but I'm going to break that rule anyway and go ahead and do a meditation once a month. So those of you that like that, we'll, we'll have a guided meditation uh, in, ju in July. Okay? So we'll do that again. Practicing meditation. And it doesn't have to be long. They say that once you do, you're, you're 10 minutes into, into that state that you achieve in meditation, 10 minutes, that your oxytocin levels are, are skyrocketing. Just because you're balancing yourself, your clarity is there, you've let your mind take a break, and you're just being, just practicing being present. And that's quite enough for your body to know this is a good thing and for you to raise those levels. It's good stuff. Sharing a meal. Mm. Something we used to do pretty regularly. Uh, we're not ready to go back to our, to our full uh, uh, covered dish luncheons yet soon. But I do have a wonderful announcement. As of next week, we're going to have fresh baked bread. Yay, Yay John L. You know, we've been doing that thing, that, that, that uh, bread thing, since 1995. And we had to sit it down when we stopped serving any kind of food here. Uh, but it, it has always been an element of who we are. I'm sure some of you can remember walking in the front doors and smelling the baking bread. It's just, it's more than just about food. It's about having that sense of connection. And my guess is that when you smell that bread baking, that it raises your oxytocin levels. And even more so, if you, if you go sit down with, some, with a plate of food with people that you love and are, are interested in and engaged in conversation with, even if you don't know them well, what you're doing is that very thing. You're raising those hormone levels in a way that, that gives you something to carry your life into a better place. Food. Who knew? Ah, yeah, we got to get back to our eight hugs a day. And, of course, if you don't quite get eight hugs a day, this is a place where you can actually get, make it up. Or at least start your, start your week with, with a, uh, 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 being a little ahead of the curve. Uh, but there's actually something, it's that tactile thing of, of connecting with someone, of touching them, of, of being heart to heart, of just acknowledging one another. You know, there's this thing about hugging that says, it's safe for me to be that close to you, that I, that I trust you, that I'm present with you, that I'm consciously aware of who you are in this moment, and I embrace that and support that. So let's get back to it. I, I invite you to make a commitment to do your eight hugs a day and make that work in your life. And if you need one, I'm usually here. If you need to come by and get a hug, and that yeah, used to happen a lot. So get your hugs, absolutely. And the last one is offer a helping hand. They, they, I don't believe in altruism. I'm sure I've told most of you that before. This idea that we do something for nothing. How could you possibly do something for nothing? Everybody's getting something. Everybody's getting, when you're spending time helping someone else, supporting someone else, you're getting the benefit of that. You're getting the support of that in your body with oxytocin, but also with this idea that you're making a difference in someone else's life. 
Now, some of us forget. We all get caught, caught up in, in our stuff, and we're not really there to help others. So I, I invite you to think about how in your life you could, you could be more present for a neighbor or a friend or a family member who could use a little time of your time to accomplish what it is that they need to accomplish. I got a great story for you. My, uh, my grandson, Aiden, is uh, practicing for a, a major uh, outing. I think it's in Wyoming. It could be Montana. I don't know why I confuse those states. Um, but he's, he's going to be out uh, hiking for, for days and days and days, long, long treks each day. So he's been doing these uh, treks at home. Uh, he did one last Sunday. He went out with his mother. And they both went on this long hike somewhere, I think, in Pisgah Forest. And uh, it, it, I, I thought it was a little over 10 miles, but Barbara tells me it's 20 miles. Either way, it's a long distance. It was a big day. And his mother went with him. And when they got home, she reported what happened on their hike. Uh, the first thing that happened along the way somewhere was a three-year-old got stung by a yellow jacket. And that one was not happy. But Aiden went to, his, his, uh, support, to support him and helped him with that and helped him calm down and helped him get through the pain of it and was there for him for that, for a three-year-old. Isn't that lovely? Somewhere along the trek as they were doing this, there, there, obviously there were other people that wasn't just... Uh, he's, uh, Aiden's getting ready to, uh, to become an Eagle Scout. And so this is part of his work, and I think he was actually completing work on a, on a hiking merit badge uh, being out there last Sunday. Uh, but he was, he was out there, uh, and they were walking at some point on this walk, and there was a nearby path, and a man uh, crashed on his bicycle. And uh, uh, Aiden was the first one that got to him and helped him. And uh, Bridget, his mother, is, is a doctor, so her quick assessment of this man was that he likely had a concussion and that he may have broken some ribs. So Aiden was able to stabilize him and support him and get him off the, the bike that was somewhat wrecked. And they managed to get him back to a place where and contacted his, his, this man's wife so that she would come and pick him up. And Aiden stayed with him the whole time. I know. But the beauty of this, and there was one more. Uh, the, uh, Bridget said that they were about 500 yards from completing this walk, and she was just out of steam. She had blisters on her feet, and she was just trembling. She was so tired. And he carried her. He held her, and then carried her back to where they, they completed and got to their cars. So, yes, what an amazing young man he is. All the time, he's building up his hormone levels. Because he's helping, because he's doing important things for other people. So he was not just giving and not getting, he absolutely was getting. We all get when we help. We're all supported when we support others. So all of these things that I've shared with you are things that you can do to give you that energy, that confidence, that clarity that where you're headed is working. And that's what we all want, right? Don't we all want to do the thing that, uh, that Thurman talked about? Don't we want to keep that resolve clear in our lives? Don't we want to do that? Of course we do. So what we do is that we do things that raise our oxytocin levels. We do them and we feel better. And we can accomplish more. And when we feel better, we have more success in our lives. And when we have more success in our lives, our tendency is to keep having success. So that's what I invite you to do today, is take those kinds of actions that will give, you the, give your body the support to keep you on that road of success, of doing things that make a difference. And it all starts in your mind. It all starts with your thinking. And if you think that you don't make a difference in this world, I want you to drop that idea and never think it again. You're an incredible emanation of the divine. You're the one that has come to do the things that only you can do. You're the one that is making a difference in your life and the lives of those you, you know and you love. So keep it up. 
and your life will get better and better all the time. Not a great idea? And so it is. Yeah, thank you. All right.